I wanted to take a few videos to look at the SAP BTP Document Management Service because I hear about it all the time with scenarios for uploading documents and then using AI or document extraction to get information from those documents. And it all starts with the Document Management Service. So I wanted to take a few videos to look at how do I install it, what are the capabilities, and how does it integrate with SAP Build? In this first video, we'll look at the integration option of Document Management Service. How do we install it, and how do we interact with it through the APIs? So let's get started. The Document Management Service of SAP BTP comes in three parts. The first part is the integration option, which is a service that lets you call APIs in order to retrieve information documents from a repository. It doesn't necessarily create a repository for you, but it creates the service to access the repository. The application option creates a GUI, basically the same pur purpose as the API, except it gives you a GUI to make the access. Again, it doesn't necessarily let you create a repository. It lets you have a GUI that can attach to a repository. And finally, there's the repository option, which is a service plan more than a, a service or application that gives you permission to uh, create a repository, whether it's through the integration option or the application option. So let's get started. The very first thing we need to do is to enable entitlements. So there are entitlements for all three of those options. And of course, you'll have to enable them in the global account. We're not, we're not going to do that here. We've already done that, enabled those, uh, those service plans for this tenant. So I'm going to add a service plan. And I'm going to search for documents. And you can see that we have the option to add uh, any of these three service plans. And we'll add all of them because eventually we'll need them all. So the application will add integration and repository. We'll add the three services and always remember to save your changes. It's not so obvious uh, that you need to save it, but there you go. You have to save it. Okay. Now, in this video, we're only going to deal with the integration option. Uh, and eventually, we'll use Postman to access the repository through um, uh, in the integration option. Since we're only dealing with the integration option, we can go to the global account and we can go to the boosters. Let's go to the global account. And there's a set of boosters. And if we search for document management, we see we have a booster. This will install only the integration option. If you need the other options, uh, or the application option specifically, you'll have to uh, do that manually. So we'll start. It checks the authorizations, which we have. We do want to create an internal repository. And we created the repository. We added the repository option uh, service plan, so it lets us do that. And we want to use our existing subaccount, to which we gave the entitlements. So we will choose uh, we will choose this subaccount. And after this, we don't need to do anything. If there were additional people that we wanted to make administrators or developers uh, and to give them access, we could, but it will automatically give me access since I'm installing it. Now creating the service instance takes a few minutes, so I'm going to skip ahead. Okay, we finished installing. Let's take a look at what it did. The first thing we can do is go to the instances. And we can see that it installed the document management service. And it installed the key. The next thing we can see if we go to role collections. It installed the document management role collection. So the only thing we need to do is add ourselves to that role collection. So if we open it up and we edit, I've already added myself to this role collection. I'm not, to use it through Postman, I'm not sure that this is really required because Postman, we're using the service key 
to do the authentication. So let's now go to Postman and actually use it. And we've created a collection which will handle the authentication for us for all of our API calls. And we've created an environment called SP Build DMS to store all of our credentials. So we will go to the DMS and we will add the client ID secret and authentication URL. So if we go back to the instances and we pick the key, oops, it's not what I wanted. We pick the key. We first get the client ID, put it there, get the client secret, put it there, and get the authentication URL and put it here. Okay. Now we'll be also using the service URL, which also comes from this key for all of our API calls, but we've already copied them into all of the individual calls. So let's go back to uh, our collections in Postman. And for the parent auth auth authorization, let's just look what we set up. We were able to do client credentials, supply the authentication URL along with OAuth and token, and then to supply the client ID and the client secret. That's all we need. We could have also done user token exchange. So we would have done um, authorization code and obviously supplied a URL for um, the user token. But we didn't have to do that here. So we will now uh, get a new access token. And you see that it failed because I did a, rookie, a kind of rookie mistake, which is that I didn't save our environment. So now I've saved the environment. I'll go back to the parent. I will get a token and I will use it. Okay. So now I can start to use the API. So the first thing we want to do is list all the repos in our document management service. So all we need to do is add slash browser to the default URL and we can go send and you see that we get an empty object because we didn't create any repos. The next thing we can do is to create a repo. So we'll go to that. And here we have, I do not believe the CMIS compatible um, service. It's the one time we're not using it. And this is to create a uh, repo. And in order to create the repo, we need a post request that has uh, JSON to indicate what to call it, what's the description, what type of repo, and so forth. So we'll send that. And now we have a repo. We get a 201, and it gives us back information about what it created. If we now go back to list repositories and send again, we now see that we have a repo. And most important is this ID of the repo that we'll need with all of our other calls. The next call we have is list repository. Similar to the list all repositories, except now we have a repo ID slash root. Okay. And if we send, it will tell us all the objects that exist in this repo. But since we just created it, it has none and we get an empty list. So let's create a folder. So for the folder, we also have to put in the ID slash root. So it's all the same. But here, for the body, we have form data and we have to provide certain parameters. So first we have to say, what is the action we want to take? So we want to create a folder. What type of object? It's a folder. And what is the name of this folder? We're going to call it the tech byte folder. Okay, that's all we need. We can send it. We get a 201, it's created a folder, and it gives us back information about the folder it created. We can also add a document, so let's go to the, re the API for adding a document. And again, the 
URL is the same, but we have to put in the repo ID. Okay. And here, it's very similar to when we created a folder, except instead of a folder, we now have to create a document. We have to give the document a name. So we call it DevToberfest Gameboard PNG. And we have to supply the... The file so we'll go to the file and we see this is the game board so we'll upload the game board and we will send it ah so i have a uh, something that's wrong ah i have two files i made a mistake so let's get rid of this one and let's send it again okay and now it gets a 201 and it's created the document. Now let's say I want to download the document. So there's another API, which is essentially the same, except it's a get with a few parameters. So the parameters that we need to provide is a CMI selector. What are we trying to get? So we're trying to get content. What is the file we want to call it when we download it? So it's my file PNG. And what is the object ID? So we need to get the object ID. So let's list everything in the repo. Now, again, run that again. And you'll see we have objects in it. So the first object is, uh, this is the folder. So we don't need the folder. So let's just close it. And the next one is the picture. So we have to get the object ID. So let's go to download the and let's put in the ID in the URL. Okay. Let's, uh, let's clear the results. Can we clear the results? Clear the results. And let's send this API. And um, I did not change the ID of the repo. So I have to get the repo again. Let's get the ID of the repo. Download the document. So in the URL, we also need the proper repo ID. Now notice that it often says permission denied. It That often means, or always means, seems to be, that uh, you have the wrong ID for the repo. Okay, we click on it. We download the document, and now we get the uh, image. That's all I'm going to do in terms of the APIs. But you can go to the Business Access Accelerator Hub to the Documents Management Service Integration Option, CMIS, set of APIs, and you will find all of the things that you can do with that API.